Hello, guys. Good morning. Can you hear yeah. me? Yes. Good morning, Prof. Right. Okay. Uh, so now we move to the final chapter of the subjects, uh, which is uh, chapter five. So chapter five, mostly a lot of uh, case study. Okay. So we will discuss together how to uh, construct. <coughs> excuse me. The model from the experimental base. So chapter 5A and 5B is about the case, uh, same case study, but uh, 5A more towards uh, source code in MATLAB, okay? But chapter 5B is more towards uh, object-oriented in MATLAB. So we go... <coughs> Uh, together okay so the case the first case study is the hot air blower system it uh, mentioned in the chapter 2d okay but that one is uh, using a non-parametric approach but this time okay This time, uh, I will use uh, the same uh, case study, same data for parametric modeling. Okay. <coughs> so this is the equipment under study. Okay. Uh, so we're going to estimating a simple models from a real laboratory uh, process data. Okay. <coughs> So the contents of these uh, presentations will be on the system description, setting up data for analysis, pre-processing, estimating non-parametric and parametric models, analyzing and estimating the model, <coughs> estimating model with the prescribed structure, validating the estimated model to experimental output and comparing estimated model plus some additional informations. <coughs> so we are going to use a system ID toolbox in the MATLAB, okay, uh, which can be used to develop and analyze simple models from a real laboratory process data. So start with the small descriptions of the process, then import <coughs> The data to the toolbox and do some pre processing conditions. Okay, for example, uh, remove the means, remove the trends, remove the outliers. <coughs> Finally, we estimate the parametric and non parametric models from the data. Okay, so once uh, the models have been identified, so we compare the estimated model with the real model to validate. Okay, so the actual output data from the experiment, excuse me. So this case study was uh, using the data collected from a laboratory called a hair dryer. Okay, so it is uh, using a feedback process trainer, PT326. Okay, so in the books as well, in the reference book, uh, Leonard Jung, 1999. So it starts from uh, the air that is fanned through a tube and heated at the inlet. Heated using a heater, okay, a grid heater. Okay, so the, the air will enter to the heater and then go to the tube. Okay, <coughs> the air temperature is measured by a thermocouple, or particularly we are using a thermistor at the outlet. Okay, so the input is the power over the heating device, which is a mesh of resistor wires, which is this one, okay? <coughs> so the output is the outlet air temperature or rather the voltage from the thermocouple. So what happened is the thermistor will sense the heat and then convert the physical signal, which is heat, to uh, electrical signal, which is a voltage. Okay, so this is the flow 
of the hot air to the exhaust. And this is the sensor, which is the thermistor. And inside here is a, is a fan rotating. Okay. And the grid is over here, the heater. Okay. So the air will go inside. Okay, when the fan rotating, so it will suck air through the mesh wire. <coughs> then the hot air will go to the uh, exhaust. So this is the real system, okay, <coughs> available in the laboratory. So after we done with the experiment, we captured the data, okay. So we load the data, okay? So this data was in the MATLAB. So if you uh, load dryer to, so it will uh, load the data from the given file in the MATLAB, which contain, consists of uh, Y2, which is the output, 1000 uh, output data, measurement of temperature <coughs> in the outlet of the airstream. And then a uh, vector U2 uh, is the input, con consists of 1000 input data point as well, consisting the voltage applied to the heater. Okay, so basically the input is power. Okay, and the output is the temperature. Okay. Okay, input. Right, so the input was generated using a binary random sequence, which is a PRBS that switch from one level to the another level uh, with the probability of 0 0.2, okay? Sampling interval is 0 0.08 seconds, which is uh, 80 milliseconds. <coughs> so first, uh, we create the data, okay? Uh, using dry ID data, okay? Which is the uh, output, input, and the sampling time 0 0.08 okay and then it will uh, when we try enter the, <coughs> the keyboard so it will give you the y uh, the y data and the input data okay Junyi, can you off your microphone please Yes. Off. I, I, I'm off here. Okay. Then we set up the data, okay, using the command shown here. Okay, and then put uh, the name of the data, the power, the temperature, unit in seconds, the input for the the input unit is what and the output unit is degree Celsius. Then we display the data okay, using this command from one to 300 samples. So <coughs> we have uh, 1000 samples. So we take uh, about one third of the total samples to display, okay, then plot. So this is the data from the hot air blower systems. Okay, so this is the output and this is the input. Okay, you can see that uh, the output try to follow the input, okay, accordingly, okay, for this uh, PRBS signals.
Okay, so when we plot, you can see that <coughs> the data is not start from zero. You observe it, it's not start from zero. Okay, from the datum line, from the reference line. So we suspect uh, there is a constant, okay, DC constant levels in the data. So we move that constant level using a D-trend. Then we plot again. Now you can see that the data is start from zero, okay? For the input and for the output, okay? So that is what we call as pre-processing data. <coughs> okay, so this one we call it as a pre-processing. Okay, so after pre-processing, after remove the means, so it starts from zero. So your data in your assignments also need to be like this. Eh? When you capture the data, it's not from zero. So you have to remove the means and everything must start from zero. Then we start to estimate by using a pre non-parametric method. For example, give an impulse and see what happened. Okay. So this is the impulse response, temperature versus time. Okay. So you can see that at the yellow point here, okay, shows that uh, it almost uh, follow the expecting uh, output from the impulse. And then we use a parametric estimation to estimate the uh, model. Okay using a prediction error method okay which is this one right so this is the calculations okay and then we plot it the boat plot i can see that the system uh, similar to the uh, second order system okay by looking at it second order system <coughs> Then uh, we plot for Nyquist as well. So it shows that the system is a second order system. And then we give step impulse. So it's also show we have a second order system with a time delay. A little bit time delay. Okay, this one, very small. Then we use the parametric approach, which is the ARX. Okay, so ARX uh, two, two, three, <coughs> okay. The model is two to three, uh, which is uh, two poles, one zeros, and the time delay is three. Okay, so this is the discrete model of the uh, ARX, okay, which is uh, Y over U is equal to B over A, okay. <coughs> and then we plot. Okay, so you can see that for the first model, ARX223, which is this one. So the black one is the real data. Okay, real or measurement. And the 88.73% is the best fit for the estimated model. <coughs> Okay, you can see that the estimated model uh, fit the real measurements at the at the percentage of 88.7, so 89%, okay, more or less, which is okay and satisfied. The agreement is very good. You can see that it's good to have uh, above 90%, 91, 92, and so on. But 89 is almost near to the to the 90. Okay. Then we compare okay, with another uh, ARX models uh, with uh, not 223. Uh, okay, so another number of beside 223. So it gives you about 88.43. The first one, 
Okay, and also give a good agreement. <coughs> and then we uh, see the distributions of the poles and zero at the mapping of the Z plane. So this is a Z plane. Okay, so you can see that uh, this one is a uh, unity circles. Okay. Inside the unity circles is the number of poles and zeros of the unknown system of the hot air blower systems. Okay, so we can see that uh, if we zoom inside here, okay, so we can see that uh, we have uh, three poles to okay inside the uh, unit circles. Okay. Uh, there is a blue, three blue uh, poles and then three red poles because we have two different model of ERX, okay, which give you 89% and 88% base width. Then we observe the boat plot, okay, we can see that both model uh, give a good agreement, okay, so it is accepted that uh, this uh, model is uh, accepted as a second order system with a small time delay, which can be ignored. Okay, and this support by the Nyquist as well. Right, that is using a source code. So to make life easy, uh, we plot uh, using a <coughs> system ID toolbox using a GUI or graphic user interface. Okay, can you see chapter 5b? Right, so I will share uh, the, using uh, uh, the, the iPad and the MATLAB okay, in the iMac. Right, so we go to the uh, this one. Yeah. Okay. So first, uh, so I have to put some battery. Battery about to die. Okay, can you see my MATLAB, guys? Uh, yes, bro. Okay. Yeah, we can see. Just type load. Eh? First, uh, load L O E D dryer two. Okay, so it's a function in the MATLAB where the data of the hot air blow system uh, has been saved inside. Okay, and then you type U two. U two is the data of the input. And Y2. Y2 is the data of the output. And then you call uh, IDENT. I D E N T. So what I said here is written in the slide chapter 5B. Okay. So everybody can follow 5B at the same time look at the monitor screen. Okay. So I call the IDENT. Okay. Can you see the IDENT? I have to share here. Okay, can you see? Oh, yes. Yeah, yes, bro. So now we have to do some import and export data. Okay, so we import the data first. Okay, so since our data is uh, power versus time for the input and uh, Temperature in voltage uh, versus time as the output. Okay, so 
we call it as a time domain data. Okay. So we have a lot of data here, time domain, frequency domain, data object. So frequency domain meaning uh, from the frequency. Lah. So time domain is from the uh, time uh, domain. Okay. Right. So then uh, we call it uh, U2. U2 is the input and Y2. Y2 is the output. And then we put the name of the data. <coughs> yeah, okay. When you import data, time domain signal, signals, put input U2 and Y2, and then put dry. Whatever name yet you, you like. I put just put dry. Okay, because from the <coughs> air blower. Then start time usually start from zero. And then the sample time is 80 millisecond. So 80 millisecond is 0 0.08. Okay, second, right? And then put some uh, details of the data, which is the uh, input is the power, actually is the PRBI signals, okay? And then the output is the temperature. Okay. Then the input is what? And the output is a degree Celsius. Okay. Then you import. Okay. So after you import, you observe the The plot, okay. Can you see the plot? Yeah. Okay, so that is the plot of the data that captured from the experiment. So the top one is the output and the bottom one is the input. Okay, so what is your observations? As I told you before in chapter 5a, uh the data of the input and output is not start from zero at the reference line so we have to do uh, pre-processing data right so pre-processing data meaning we come back to the system id toolbox okay and then we do pre-processing but remove means okay Okay, so remove means. And then after we remove means, you can see that uh, now we have two, uh, two color. One is blue, one is green. So blue is before pre-processing. And green is after pre-processing. Okay, it's the same data, input and output data, but the green one has been uh, removed the means. Okay, so that is start from zero. Okay, okay, guys. Okay, yes, right. okay, prof. Well, so good, eh? <laughs> so you have to do this system ID toolbox for your assignments. That's why uh, we must cover this uh, as soon as possible before submissions. Right, okay, and then uh, after that, uh, you drag and drop this dry D to the working data. Because uh, we want to do another pre-processing data, okay. Uh, this time is to select the range, okay. So selects the range, meaning that uh, we have a one thousand data, okay. Uh, we have a one thousand data. So in practice of system ID, okay, and estimation, uh, we must uh, divide the data into two. You have a thousand, ten thousand divided by two, five thousand for the identification and the remaining five thousand for the validation or verifications. So since our data now is one thousand, so we must divide into two lah. So one to five hundred is the estimation. Okay. Dry de. Okay, and then uh, insert. 
Okay, and then the remaining, uh, uh, remaining, okay, reprocessing again, uh, remove means, oops. So you make mistakes, so you have to put this one into the trash. So it's gone. Okay, so dry D pre-processing again. Uh, remove uh, select range. So the remaining of the 501, after 500, 501, space 1000. Okay, so we call it as a dry. Uh, uh, after estimate is validate lah, V okay insert okay and then close oops close it too okay can you see so this is the first one DRY is the raw data so if we don't use it we deactivate so you click at the dry so when deactivate is not bull anymore okay so dry d is after remove mean after pre-processing so this one we will not use anymore so we deactivate okay so the one that left is the dry de the first 500 and dry dv which is the same data but remaining 500 so we observe the plotting can you see the plotting, guys? Yes. Okay. So it's the same data from the dry D after pre-processing, but we divide into two, the first 500 and the remaining 500. The red one is for the estimation and the blue one is for the validations. So far, so good? So far, so good, guys? Okay. Eh? So... Uh, so why do we need to separate it into two? As I told you before, is the practice of system ID. Uh, so to make sure that uh, when you analyze the red one, the blue one uh, proof that the, the your your work is correct and uh, true. The, the, the second part is for the validation. For the validations. Okay. Right. Okay. So now uh, we have to. Uh, estimate the data so what we should do is uh, we follow the the steps okay in the slide i already import data and then i already make a step five finish step six finish step seven finish import step time plot okay done done step 11 so chapter 5b now is we are in the page 29 Okay, page 29. Eh? So now we have to drag and drop. The dry DE, the red one, will go to the working data. And dry DV will go to the validation data. Okay, guys. So that is the uh, active data at the moment uh, for analysis. <coughs> Okay. Now we have to do the estimate. Okay, estimate. So estimate what? Estimate transfer function model. Okay, uh, we have a space space model, process model, polynomial models, nonlinear ARX model, Hamiltonian winner. So this is the model structure. Okay, that we learned in chapter three. So we want a parametric model. So it's a polynomial models, lah. Eh? Which is a number one to number four. Okay, number four. Right? So we choose number four. And then they have a ARX. They suggest a ARX. So in the in the notes, uh, we suggest for uh, ARX, uh, if I'm not mistaken, ARX two to three. Sorry, ARX441. Uh, then 223. Then, uh, then compare. Okay. 
So we have two type of model. The first one is uh, ARX441. Okay. ARX441. Right. So, and then predictions. Okay. Input delay. Okay. And then estimate. Okay. Okay. So, 441 means the 4 minus 1, three zeros. The middle four is four poles, and uh, one is the time delay, right? And then uh, the way I choose it, I choose at here, okay? Polynomial models. When you click at the estimate data, you choose polynomial model. So the structure is ARX. The orders is four for one. The first four is minus one, three zeros. The middle four is the poles, and the the, the last number of one is the time delay. Okay, so model ARX. IV is instrumental variables. So that is another model structure, but not covered in our in our syllabus. Then domain is discrete because we are not uh, doing continuous anymore. Okay, the data is continuous. Right. <laughs> then prediction, the estimate. So once you estimate, it will go to the System ID toolbox ARX441. Okay. So then, uh, since the ARX441 is, uh, what do you call that? Uh, active data now, okay, because of the bull, then you check the model output. Okay. Okay. Can you see the model output? Yeah. At the model output, uh, you have a blue and black. Okay, the black one is the real from the measurement, is the real data. Okay, and the blue one is the estimated. Okay, estimated model. What model? ARX. What structure? Four four one. Okay, and it gives you a best fit, uh, eighty nine point six. Okay, eighty nine point six. So far, so good. Okay. 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 Yes, doctor. Yes. And then uh, uh, go back to the system ID toolbox. Okay. Sorry. Okay. And then we see the. Uh, we double click this ARX441, double click, okay? So when you double click, you will get uh, the detailed information of the ARX441, okay? Can you see? Okay, the info, right? So the info is, uh, this is the ARX equations, A multiplied by Y equal to B multiplied by U plus E. So since E is very small, we ignore, okay? So what left is Y over U is equal to B divided by A. So this is B, B, 0.001256Z minus one, okay? Uh, divide by A polynomials, okay? So this is the, the number or the discrete time ARX model that you must jot down and put in your in your report okay sample time 441 per seconds so we go back to the uh, here okay and what else you can see you can see model output okay and you see the model residuals model residuals is to see the validations Okay, so if you see the validations here, right, uh, the correlations, uh, this is the autocorrelations of the temperature, and this is the cross correlation between the power and the temperature. Okay, so it seems that's very good uh, because it's uh, between uh, minus 0 0.1 and sorry, I'm not sure. 0 0.1. Okay, sorry. There's a lot of windows. <laughs> using this GUI, okay? 
can see that the autocorrelations of the temperature, okay, of the input, okay, is under the zone of 0 0.1 and minus 0 0.1, and the cross correlation of the input and output between power and temperature is uh, also satisfied at plus minus 0 0.1. So how about the residuals? Uh, how about the other validations uh, method? Okay, so if we double click again at this, uh, <coughs> so we can see that uh, here, you scroll. Uh, so you can see that the FPE, final prediction error, is almost zero. 0 0.001679 is zero, meaning that is good. Okay very good okay mse also 0 0 0.01601 is also good okay and the fit to the estimation data okay <coughs> is a 92 95.22% okay for dry de okay just scroll eh? this is the arx model b over a and then uh, this one is the uh, validation or verifications tools uh, which is uh, shown in the, in the here okay so i repeat again so this is the b over a the arx model 441 so you scroll a little bit down there you can see that the fpe is zero the mse is zero okay right what else you can uh, see uh, the the distributions of the poles and zero from the ERX model. Okay, you can see the transient response as well. Okay, it's here. Okay, four for one. And then you can see the uh, frequency response as well. Okay. All right, and then you can see the Z plane. Okay, the Z plane. Yeah, zeros and poles. Okay, just click zeros and poles. Okay, there you see. Okay, so where is the unit circle? You have to call. Okay. Uh, Unity circles start here. Oh, unity circles is between uh, zero, minus one. Okay, this is uh, the unity circles. Okay. Sorry, I'm not sure. <laughs> Lampa. Yeah. Wait, eh? Because I have to switch a lot of windows. Okay. Okay. Can you see the Z plane? Okay, so the unity circle is uh, between, sorry. Uh, zero, minus one, minus one, and one. So, file, option, style, Ah, unit circles. Okay. There you go. That is the unit circles. Okay. You can see that uh, uh, the zeros, uh, uh, sorry, the poles, all poles inside the unit circles. What is the meaning of that? Meaning that the system is stable. Okay. No issue of unstable. But, but the zeros, two zeros, okay, is outside the unit circles. Meaning that uh, the system is non-minimum phase. Is a non-minimum phase, yeah. Is a non-minimum phase. Okay. Okay, let's see. Uh from the uh 5B, I test 441, then we get 89.61%. Then try uh, two to three, the new combinations of the uh, ARX model. 
So we go to here again. Okay, the estimations go to the polynomial models. Okay, then you just uh, type there uh, two, two, three. Two, two, three, meaning that uh, one, zero, two poles, and three time delays. Okay, ERX. Okay, two, two, three. Then you estimate. Right, so I already changed here. If you can you see there, okay. So I uh, make another ARX model structure to compare with the 441. Okay, so it seems that uh, I already estimate. Okay, so we see uh, what is the model output, okay, which is the, the comparison between the real and the estimation model. Right. Okay. Right. So now you can see uh, three lines. Black is the real data. Blue is the 441 estimated ARX 441 we just discussed just now. And the green one is the 223. Okay. 223 is uh, give you 89.03, which is less than 441, but still 89%. Okay. So it's almost the same. Okay. Right. Then the, the transfer functions, okay, of the ERX 223, you just uh, double click here, 223, you double click. And then you will get the descriptions of the 223 here. Okay, data or model info of 223, which is uh, AZ, okay, and BZ. So is the B over A. It's a little bit simpler, simple, okay, uh, compared to the 441, which is uh, quite long, okay, because uh, we have only one zeros and two poles. And the validation FPE is zero, MSE also zero, meaning that it's, it's good data, okay? Good estimations. Then the rest you can see, the model residual transient, but you want to see the zero and pulse map. Okay, so we activate two to three. Okay, then insert unit circles. Okay. Unit circles. There you can see that uh, two poles. Okay, can you see? <laughs> two poles is inside the unit circle system stable, and the single zeros is inside the unit circles, meaning that is the system now is minimum phase. It's not uh, non minimum phase anymore. Right. From there, uh, we come back to the slide. Okay. okay, so this is what we've done. Uh, I conclude, eh? I conclude everything. Okay, so we call the system ID toolbox, which is uh, IDENT, I-D-E-N-T, in at the double prompt. And then we import the data, okay, time domain data. Y2 and U2. After that, we insert the uh, sampling time, which is uh, 80 milliseconds. Uh, so in the system ID toolbox, you just type 0 0.08 second, meaning that that is uh, 80 milliseconds. Then the sampling frequency is 12.5 uh, uh, hertz, which is 1 over 0 0.08. So insert that. And then I uh, put the name. Then after you put the name, you label the input unit and output unit. Okay, and then you import. So you will get the uh, dry data. So after dry data, you see the time plot. So it's not uh, at zero, starting from zero. So you have to do some pre-processing. 
okay that is the circle shows that uh, it's not start from zeros so do the uh, pre-processing data to remove the offset okay which is a remove mean so it become dry d so dry d is much better okay the green one okay compared to the blue one and from there you uh, drag and drop dry d at the working data then you proceed with the uh, second pre-processing procedure which is select range since the data is 1000 so you the first 500 and the remaining 500 will be set for the data okay one to 500 for estimation one the 501 to 1000 for their validations <coughs> and then start to estimate okay start to estimate meaning that you have to drag the dry uh, e to the working data and dry uh, b at the validation data okay as i did now in step 19 then step 20 is you call the uh, step 21 you observe the time response the spectrals frequency response and then call the linear parametric model okay which is the polynomial models arx441 then from 441 you analyze you double click at 441 so you get the info of the polynomial b and polynomial a because erx model is equal to b polynomial b divided by polynomial a Okay, then you observe that uh, the ARX441 give you 89.61%. Okay. And then uh, try 223. So 223 is here. Okay. So the models uh, give you about 89% as well. 89.02 to be uh, to be details. Okay. And then observe the two, and then you try three ARX models: four, four, one, three, three, one, and two, two, three. Okay, so this is a four, four, one, eighty-nine point six one percent best fit. Okay, and that is the ARX four, four, one uh, model B divided by A. Okay, so this one B divided by A. So you can see that. Uh, y over u equal to b divided by a then this one you can simplify okay you can simplify this one okay you factorize right and then uh, you use your calculator okay to find the value of zeros and the value of poles okay so use white calculator, Casio, the new one, which can calculate uh, four roots. Okay, the new Casio, black, uh, the white one. Okay, go and buy. Right, and then you can see that uh, two zeros outside the unit circle for four four one. Non-minimum phase. Okay, stable. Right, and this is the correlation step response, frequency response, and then we try BB1, which is 88.86, so 89% as well. Okay, so this one is a 331, sorry, yeah, it's not 441, 331. So this is the PRX model. Okay, so this is the Parametric model, ERX331. And then you do the simplifications, factorize, and you can see that we have two zeros and three poles. Okay. Then you plot it. Okay. Uh, if you see that still we have a zeros outside the minimum phase, still non minimum phase. All poles inside the unit circles are stable. Okay. 
And finally, we choose the 223, which give you 89.18%, uh, right? And this is the ARX model. After you click the graph of ARX 223, okay? And this is the ARX model, parametric model, 223, factorized. So you have a one zeros and two poles, which is the, I think is the best one. The best model among uh, 441 and 33331. Okay, because it's simple, it shows the second order behavior. And according to the manual of the book of the uh, trainer, uh, the system actually, when closed loop, is second order system. Okay, so this is the best model. So one zeros inside the unit circles, so uh, two poles inside the unit circle stable and minimum phase okay so we compare all three together okay it give uh, 89 percent okay uh, you can use after this after the class you can follow my uh, youtube and try to get above 90 percent if you get above 90 percent share with me in the whatsapp okay so comparison uh, three models poles and zero map and if you have no idea uh, what to do, what to choose for model structure, you just uh, simply uh, goes to the system ID toolbox, okay, okay, and then uh, go for uh, quick start, okay. So quick start uh, advise you, the MATLAB advise you what model is the best, okay. You want to see, guys? Hello, you want to see? Oh, yes. Okay, yes, quick start. Eh? Quick start. Uh, the, the, the computer will uh, do the analysis for you automatically and give you the results. Okay, did I have the results? Okay. Okay, uh, okay. so uh, it gives you a suggestion. Okay, suggestions, uh, three model which is this one, okay? So it gives you three suggestions, uh, N4S3, 89.51, ARX223, 89.03, and Impulse, 89.03. So far, that is the best because uh, deal with the heat temperature control is quite difficult, okay? Because uh, it's very difficult to control the heat as well because uh, to get the a best 90 percent unless you can try and if you get succeeded to get 90 percent okay uh, please uh, share with us all right all right guys i think uh, that's all for today uh, then we continue again on tuesday inshallah for uh, 5c and 5d okay i will share the youtube link later all right guys thank you prof okay. thank you, prof. Thank you thank very you. much Thank you, bro. Thank you, bro.